we're going to put into things that are going to make things much more lethal, we're going to take it up a notch. Absolutely. If I've got a warning, he's got a problem with his fists are up, he's getting ready to talk. And remember this. If a man is talking to you and threatening you, and he's talking smack, you say something. He's getting ready to come in with a punch, he's coming in with a... He's talking, go. You'll find that you can't talk and punch at the same time. But we're going to change things now. We're going to change things that you have out there, possibly. It's an equalizer. We're going to get into an equalizer. And I can't use it on a jack as much. Can't use it on a jack as much. He comes in, but say he's really skilled, he's a little welder or bodybuilder or whatever. He comes in, boom, comb is here again. Comb is here again. This is very frightening because I'm going to turn him into a shield. It's just here. Can't break his neck, of course. There's no reason. He's my shield. When I dump someone, you'll notice I never get behind them. I'm always at an angle. So when I dump him, he's going to drop forward. I'm moving out of the way. I'm always out of the way if I have to dump him. The only reason I would dump this man is I've got to go to his wife. I've got to go to my family or whatever. I, can't, I don't need a shield. I don't need a shield. I've got to get to someone I love quickly because this other person isn't on me. He's on somebody else. Very important. Simple comb. When he gives me enough time, what I mean by that, he's up there. He's already talking. He's already telling me what he's going to do to me. I'm going to take your so you got, you got time. You don't let him see the comb and go. So now the big guy comes in. Thank you, Jack. If you get time, if you get time, you got to survive that initial attack. He came in. Boom. You survived it. Your comb came up. Your comb came up. This is lethal. My hand is here. Comb is very tight here. As he comes in hard, and when I'm here, when he's coming, I'm very relaxed. You will never see me, go ahead, get into this fighting kind of emotion. You will see me as he comes in, just float into him. Just float into him and I'm coming in. This is what you saw already. He's going to be here. Bam. Hook it. It's not going to kill him, but it's sure going to do some damage. Again, stepping behind it, I don't need a shield. I'm going to snap him back and dump him right to the floor. Comb can be used for many different things. He's coming up. Be careful on this one, Bob. As he throws a punch him here, you're just going to rip. You just ripped across his throat here. He thinks you've got a knife in your hand. He thinks he has a weapon. No, it's not. He doesn't see it. You had time. Boom, boom. You're just right here. And you're getting out of the way. You have distance. You have distance, which is very, very important. Another weapon. Again, there's a difference between a small man and a big man. We're dealing with a big man. Things are ugly. Things are very, very ugly. You've got time. Boom, your pen came up. He's coming in hard. Again, it's straight in. Straight in. The pen is straight in from here. Always grabbing hair, slamming it, whatever you need to do. But you can't kill this guy. This pen won't kill him. But it'll sure do an extreme amount of damage. He comes in straight in. He's coming straight in. You're slamming it. Boom. Pen comes straight in. You stopped him. Stopped him. Bring it in. Grab some hair. Strike to the base of the skull which is very, very important, getting to the base of the skull. There are no rules out there. Maybe he's coming, up, he's coming in hard. Strike to the groin, here. But you're leaving now. I got out of there. I didn't need a shield. I'm gone. Never meeting his power. Never meeting his power. There are no rules. There are no high side. There are no low side. But some of the things that are rules is that, number one, you heard me express it. Boom, he comes in. There are no blocks. There are no locks. There are no kicks. There's no high, low side. There are no stances. Absolutely, you can't get into a stance. And when you train, practice from different angles. I'm standing, all of a sudden he's there. Boom! You saw, you're right, you got to decide. You've got to decide where you're going to be at. There's not going to be rules out there. You don't walk around, okay, we're going to go for it. That's not going to happen. Those that train on these different levels, you need to take to a classroom and see that. So if you're standing there, he throws a punch, and you practice your techniques, that's fine. Martial arts, the word, notice the word is art, the art of fighting in a controlled situation, making techniques work. Let me say that again, making techniques work. In a fighting situation, he comes in quick, nothing works. Nothing works. The only thing that may, notice I say may, there are no guarantees out there, anyone that says, this is the ultimate. This will keep you alive. This is the best. He's got a closed mind. He's not dealing real because there's not such a thing out there. There's a 10-year-old kid right now in some alley practicing with a knife or whatever that could take me apart in a second. 
You never have the mindset. Keep an open mind. Watch this tape. Get other ideas. Experiment. Keep an open mind. Do the things that happen to you. Do the things that happen to you, which is very important. One of the things that you're going to see, and we use this a lot when you get in the night, he's going to throw a punch, and your hands are here. You just, you, he just threw that punch, but watch what this hand does. He comes in hard here, and your hand just rubs into his face. It, it doesn't punch. doesn't punch. You're just here, and you're just rubbing your hands in his face. It's a lousy feeling when you rub your hands in someone's face. It gave me that opportunity to come forward. I am not going to tell you exactly what to do or how to do it, but there's open mind to how to get there. But don't fight his strength or his power. Don't do it, because he'll kill you. He'll go right through you. He'll kill you. I promise. One of the most lethal weapons you have with you, and if it ever happens, again, is your cell phone. You saw that when you are being grabbed or whatever. This is a monster. He's coming at you again. You got him. You survived. You got out of the way. Boom, you're walking. he's coming up again. Cell phone's right here. Smash it with everything you're worth. Cell phone is a deadly weapon. I'm not going to tell you how to use it precisely, how to use it. But again, if you've got time, he's coming in. But you cannot stand out here. He's going to throw a punch. Try to get with kicks and blocks and then try to use your cell phone. You're going to fold in. He's throwing that punch. You're attacking him. You've got to understand why this works, whether it's a cell phone or hand contact. If he's thinking I'm standing here as he throws a punch, he's, he wants to hit me in the face. I'm stood there to get hit in the face. When you have the mindset, he's throwing a punch and coming at him, you've cut it in half. He can't go forward. And you want to relax when you fly, but be quick. Be very, very, very quick, which is very important to grasp. Being very quick. Say he's coming in quick. My hand's right here, right in solid, right here. Again, this let me do what I wanted to do. Do not ever, ever plan what you're going to do, because guess what? You won't have time to plan. You will not have time to plan. One of the things that will work very, very well is, is if you have five quarters or four or five quarters in your pocket, and he comes running at you here, you got distance. Throw those five quarters as hard as you can. Throw any change that you have in his hand right in his face as hard as you can. Chase those quarters and keep right on coming. Stay right on his face. Stay right on his face. Whether it's a drink, you have a drink, you have something that you can use, a, a glass, um, Anything that's used, anything that's used, and you actually have to practice with a glass. You don't want a warning. You're standing there drinking something, the guy, boom. Don't sit there and cock it back and throw it. But when you throw it, it's here. You're already, on, you're already moving with him. You can't go life and death. Maybe it's an, you know, a plastic cup or whatever. You just can't scar him up unless it's an absolute survival mode situation. Throw it. You have some change in your pocket. Throw it as hard as you can. But you must grasp the concept that when something happens, both hands are working. Both hands are working always. Two-finger grasp, you've heard me talk about this already. This is like a snake bite. Boom, it's right in tight. Elbows, boom, you're here. In Alaska, they used to kill polar bears striking to the back of the head with a piece of whale bone. And this is about as big as a polar bear. But when this comes at you, you want to be here. You want to be in that striking mode, getting into that. So if you're trying to survive out there, there are no kicks, there are no punches, there are no elbows. And absolutely, go ahead. You stop, stop right there, good. As you, you got people trying to throw sweeps. You, got, you know, it's, it's just ridiculous. It's not going to happen. These are the things that you have to grasp. Do the things that work in your training center and get these big guys out there. And uh, we'll see what happens in real life. You're going to see that the martial art training is wonderful. But your fighting is a totally different mindset. Don't fight a strength ever. Only going to the weakest points of the body. A groin strike's fine. If you threw in and I had all the time in the world, pop, that's fine. As long as you don't attack structure. Don't sit there, go ahead, throw a punch. And attack, I always hear this. Strike the old bicep, come in. No, that's not, please. Little people, fine. You see people throwing punches run through, risk take, these are going to get you killed. Take it to your school. Again, you hear me say this over and over again. Take what works. Bob has one thing that's very painful, which I'm not going to do, is he throws a punch. Just grabbing him by the beard is ugly. Bob's my friend. Bob's my friend. This is a terrible, terrible thing to do to someone. Coming up again and striking. So you just don't want to hurt this man in that, that way. 
So in conclusion to fighting, you have to grasp the concepts that size and power is out there, that a person's not going to stand there and let you headbutt him three times or whatever because they're running at you because they have, why? They have no respect for you. You must have them in your mind that the person has a weapon. You never want to grab him or try to sweep him because if you don't get it, you're going to have a knife in your side or in your back or whatever. You will be killed. That would be a terrible tragedy. This man in front of you is only a shield looking for other things because in the street there are other things. You never have the right to think that you're fighting one man. You never have the right to take someone down and start to wrestle them. You never have the right to focus on that person to try to stomp him down because somebody else is going to be behind you smacking you alongside the head, which is very, very important to grab. Everything that we do on the street, if it takes over one second. Now, what I mean by one second, you might get clear. You might get him off you in one second. Maybe you can't finish him in one second. But one second. If you go 1,001 and you're still dealing with this person, you're not in a street mode. There are wonderful martial arts out there. There are wonderful, wonderful fighting systems out there. Like I said, this is not a system. This is a concept. You have to be able to deal very, very quickly with the things that are out there. And again, from the time it takes one man to go here, he thinks he has you controlled, all of a sudden, boom, he sees it done. You have a second to take care of that other person. And that's the mindset here. Now that you're armed with this knowledge of hand-to-hand -hand concept, understanding that you're a shadow, you're not fighting the person, you're never going to their strongest techniques, that you understand when you're grabbed, you never fight their strength, you understand that when you're choked, whatever, you, you actually become the attacker. You use your, your two-finger grasp, which you saw, to survive. You understand that when things get ugly, when you're dealing with a powerful man or whatever, you have a comb with you, which can be turned into a lethal weapon. Maybe it's your pen. Maybe it's your cell phone or your wallet. You've also learned here today that speed and power is out there on how to deal with that. You understand now that there are no rules out there. There are no stances. It, you have to do whatever it takes. And you have to understand that fighting a big man, you do not get to use traditional techniques such as elbows, punches, kicks, or throws because it will get you killed out there. The true mindset of the, the street fighting person is that there's always more than one person. They have a knife. They have friends. And that you never want to focus on per, this one person. If you keep that mind concept, you will be a safer person out there. If you're going to take anything from this video, I think the most important thing is, is the mindset is that it's dangerous out there and to use common sense and the techniques you use is to make sure everything happens very quickly and to realize that there's danger around you, not just with that one person. Take it to the level you have to take it to, be very open-minded and to use the techniques that are effective as quickly as possible. Thanks for watching our video lessons here at TRS Direct. Hit the like button down below and consider subscribing to our channel here on YouTube. Hit the bell icon and we'll send you a notification when there's a new lesson available. Thanks again for watching.